You're listening to Find the Good News, Episode 12, The Pixels and the Ink, featuring Denisha Davis Harger. This episode of Find the Good News is sponsored by Parker Brand Creative Services, a branding agency that thinks sideways, pushes forward, and gets your brand up. Check out our work at parkerbrandup.com. Would you like to help make sure I'm asking my guests the really good questions? Just visit findthegood.news and click the questions tab. I'll see if I can get your question dropped in the fishbowl. Each episode, my guests will dive deep, select three random questions, and if yours is selected, I'll ask it on the show. That's findthegood.news. Meeting the creative people behind local art is something I look forward to on Find the Good News. In this episode, I visit with graphic artist Denisha Harger. She has a special knack for delivering vintage vibes and colorful local icons. Denisha knows what kind of art she likes, and that's the kind of art she creates. She believes in knowing her tools and using them well. Denisha's not hard to find. If there's a local event serving up creative vendors, she's there to do her part. She loves what she does and loves sharing her talents with others even more. Denisha and other artists like her are making Southwest Louisiana a really good place to call home. Wake up, it's morning. You're dreaming up a story I can hear The way it's going Cause you're laughing in your sleep On the path to your deliverance In a holy wall of light Pouring through your window Old news, bad news, happy, fake news Sometimes you just want to shut it all down and get no news at all. With Find the Good News, I aim to change that by focusing on good people doing good work. I visit with artists, educators, civic and spiritual leaders, musicians, business owners, students, volunteers, and everyday citizens who are using their creativity, resources, and talents to bring hope and happiness to their corner of the world. In each episode, I dig into the hearts and minds of my extraordinary guests. We have street-level conversations about relatable things going on in their lives. Discover the critical life experiences that shape them, the perspectives that drive them, and the fundamental beliefs that are anchoring them to a path of goodness. There's a lot of news in the world. My name is Orrin Parker, and I'm going to find the good. And I love you just. So, you went to Suwella. I did. Okay, when did you graduate? That's a hard question. I was trying to remember that the other day. Um, yeah. I want to say it was 2012. Oh, wow. Okay, so I mean yeah. like six years ago. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't seem like You've it was You've done a lot in ago. six years, though. I, mean, six, I? I think. I mean, six <laughs> years is uh, short. I mean, to me, it yeah. is. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, you've got a pretty well-known name around the community oh gosh i guess <laughs> i think so i mean i don't know i remember you let's see i first start, i guess started taking note whenever i would go out and film arts and crabs okay and you always had a table and yeah. you know you, your just reputation just seems to have grown since yeah. then you know and, mean, and your style too is kind of refining oh yeah absolutely for sure <laughs> yeah what would you say about your style it varies yeah yeah it just depends on um i mean a lot of different things i i'm a learner so i when i see things that i like i will i guess kind of refine that and you can kind of tell if you look at things like i have a few things that i would call series so they'll be between like say six and twelve um illustrations and you can kind of None of them are the same, but everything in those in that series are yeah. exactly the same. So you could see something from like two years ago um, and be totally different from what I did at the beginning of this year. Right. So I mean, it just depends on, um, I guess, what I'm learning or at that period of time. Well, that's interesting. So yeah, you're not just doing it on mood. I mean, I'm sure mood kind of plays into that, like yeah. right, what you're interested in at that right. moment. Right. Yeah? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I guess that's kind of me too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I try to think back sometimes, like, how in the world did I get into graphics design? <laughs> okay, well, that's a good question. That actually leads me into what I'd like to know. 
when do you i mean i look at your work and i go oh she's a graphics designer but then i look at you and go well she's an artist and then yeah. i go well what is that because that comes up with a lot of people like that's an interesting little spot that some yeah. pe people have all kinds of opinions about too yeah so but like what are you, where do you place yourself in that these days i would say more of an artist an artist okay yeah. um to me i think graphic de design seems more technical than yeah um an artist so i don't know it's like i can see both sides of that um so i mean yeah i would definitely say these days just an artist, an artist. a graphic artist a graphic artist there yeah you go. <laughs> i always struggled with that <clears throat> you know for me my career or path or whatever you want to call it it kind of meandered all over the place mm -hmm. I mean, I started out in my life as I, I like to draw. That was right, it. Right. I mean, most of us do. I mean, how about you? Like, where does where does that go for you? Like, going back, where does that begin? Uh, when I, I guess the earliest artist moment I can remember is um, maybe third grade. Oh like wow, between, that's pretty far back. Yeah, like between eight and ten, I would say. And I remember drawing a picture of a T-Rex. I couldn't tell you what it looks like, but I remember bringing it home and everyone was very impressed by this T-Rex. And I'm sure it probably you started, wasn't You heard that it, great. right? And they're going, yeah. oh, look how good they're showing people, so, right? Um, and then some, probably around that same amount of time, um, it was, I was in, I've always been into cartoons, I guess. I mean, I, I don't grow up, so I still watch cartoons. But um, I would draw a lot of Looney Tunes yeah. And um, so I would have like notebooks and sketchbooks full of um, Looney Tunes. I'd look at that and then just draw it. Um, so Looney Tunes and Lisa Frank also like I had this um, a folder, I guess, in, in that time period. And it was one of the ones that was like three bunnies that were like ballerinas on a stage. And I remember drawing that a lot. Just, I guess, not paying attention in class and drawing these ballerina bunnies. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the beginning of it. I drew a lot of cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting when you talk to people like you and I mean, I'd even say for myself, it's the same thing. You can usually think back to those early things. And it's funny how you can recall yeah. what it was. Yeah. Some people, they couldn't tell you what they drew. Right. You know, when they were a kid. But I, get, I think it's something interesting about someone that takes that path because it sticks out. Yeah, I mean, and it's not, I mean, sometimes you can even see, I can think of a specific um, series, I guess, and I'm, look at them like, yeah, I can totally see the Lisa Frank influence uh -huh. in there. And then also, those were all animals, and that's basically all I draw now is yeah. animals. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it all kind of, it all kind of lines up, I guess. See, that was how it was for me, too, with, with drawing. I mean... I, I I thought that I liked one thing, mm -hmm. but as I got older, I realized it was something else. For me, and I, I might have talked about this on the show with somebody else. Yeah, I did. We talked about figure drawing. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad read comic books. And so I just, they were laying around, and I can remember reading his books. Right. You know, and I think at first, I mean, I still like them, and I like that whole genre, science fiction. That was something my dad liked. So you kind of pick up mm -hmm. being exposed, but... Not to get too far off track, but I think later on, I come to realize what I liked was anatomy. Right. You know, I thought it was just, oh, I like these muscle bound people. But I actually, when I started taking figure drawing classes, I become fascinated with the muscles under the skin and the yeah. weight, you know, all that kind of stuff, the bones and um, the structure of things right. like the interior and the exterior so it was a weird thing and i didn't really think about that till later in life i was like you know it's not really so much that i like i do like comic book characters but i think i just like watching the human figure right. move and like figuring out how that all works and how muscles change so yeah and then faces i think morgan had said she likes faces and i was like you know i like faces too yeah but like you're saying animals it was yeah, creatures i can't do faces faces are they they should look a very specific way yeah and if they don't I, that would drive me crazy i couldn't i don't think i could what's do awesome that. though is you figured that out i mean how old are you 34. 34. So, I mean, you, you're not struggling with that. Some no, people no, no. would still be struggling with that and not going, at all. you know, I want to, I got to figure this face thing out. Or I got to figure out how these hands and all that. You're, you, you figured out, Hey, look, I know what I like. And right. you're, you're just deciding to focus on that. Yeah. See, I would say, and I guess it's interesting talking to you because you're a graphic artist, you right. know, so this is going to be an interesting conversation for me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I guess I made the opposite decision. It's probably a mistake. 
Okay. To be honest, like I was like, I've got to figure it out and try to do everything because I didn't know uh, what, what I, and this is sad, but I mean, I think because I got probably because I got married and had kids at a very young age, mm-hmm. survival became very important. Yeah. And so if I was going to do something creative, the way my brain was wired was like, well, I got to be able to sell it. And so if I'm going to sell it, I've got to be able to do a lot of things because if I just focus on one thing, I'm going to starve. Right? right. Right. So it was like, ter- it was fear. And I hate mm-hmm. to say that that's actually just being honest. It was probably fear driven. That, I mean, that makes Fear-driven sense. Fear-driven decision, yeah. you know? And so now I get older and I go, man, what should... I, and I'm just able to reflect more and go, what should I have probably tightened the screws on and maybe taken a risk to focus? And so hearing you say that you've found sort of a focal point, yeah. or yeah, it's awesome. Oh, well, thanks. That's a good thing, in my opinion. <laughs> doesn't mean that it won't probably be challenging. Right. You know, any I think any artist is probably going to have challenges. What are some challenges you face being a... A full-time artist, right? Oh, God. Uh, uh, so many things. <laughs> so many. What's the top thing that, that, that you... Uh, well, this is probably a, a heavy question. No. Sleepless night question. Like, what is... As an art that's art-related, what keeps you up at night? Um, I think number one, and it probably won't come as a surprise to anyone, is just being good enough. Being good enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's... And, and that's all and that's probably not even um necessarily just with art that's just me in, in general, general. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i mean it i would say that being good enough and um i guess making this work yeah this thing that i decided to do and dropped everything so it's kind of like um yeah you got to make it work and i think that's probably why i do do so much yeah is because you know and also i guess guilt like you dropped everything sure and changed everything so Man. now you have to you have to do this you have to make it work so i i think that that is it. a great answer because you know what it's honest yeah i, I mean, mean guilt i man you just totally struck a nerve for me i mean yeah. guilt unfortunately isn't it sounds negative but it's a huge motivator oh yeah i mean to go well i i i would say the same thing about the creative services business it's like well i mean this is what i do right and so i have to do it i can't just chill out exactly you know i mean and there's and i would wish i could be i'm I'm being honest i mean i would love to be able to sit here and tell you that it's all for the love of the game oh no i know better Uh, but it's not true (laughs) i mean so much of it's just hey it's it's economics of the thing yeah yeah i think that's something we i think maybe public uh, hmm, what we put out to the public sometimes maybe not even what we put out i think sometimes it's what people expect from creative people is that all creative people are cool and they're going to be like really you know just awesome people to be around and their minds work totally different it's like there's just color and paint and it's like there's all this music inside of you and i think that's what maybe outside sometimes it can look like even especially with social media it's like you can put that out there and it's like oh man they're so creative and I even hear it here. They're like, "I, you, you creative folks. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I don't know what that means to the person who just said that to me. Because yeah. the reality is, is, is not that. Well, I mean, both of those things can be true. I mean, we do think differently and we do have yeah, weird true, brains. True. But I guess being... Um, on the other side of that like it's not always great (laughs) right sometimes it's really stressful when you're trying to sleep at night and you can't because you have all these things running through your head constantly yeah so i mean it can be true on both sides yeah and i think i know creativity i I talk about that a lot on this show i've and I'll, i'll pose this to you uh I'd be interested to hear what you think about it. <laughs> I, I have come to believe, and, and this probably started, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, that creativity isn't just something that's generated from us. Okay. That it's actually a lot like love. Okay. You know, I mean, and there are people who are going to go, well, love is generated from us, too. It's just an emotion. It's chemicals, all that. I mean, there's right. the science of it. And I'm gonna just going to ask you for a second to go forget the science. <laughs> Love, in my opinion, is sort of like a force. Okay. And so I see creativity as sort of a force. And um, 
it wants to manifest. Right. Right. Yes. And so I, I look around at all the creation and I go, I see creativity manifesting and unfolding and just constantly trying to make something new out of other things and just new life, new plants, new people, new colors. And then we become sort of little um, extensions of that. Okay. Right. And so that force sort of comes out in us too. And then we paint and we create and right. it's all unique. And where am I going with this? So <laughs> I guess, you know, in one, one regard, do you, and the reason I bring that up is because do you ever feel that if you think of it as a force that arises, do you ever feel it? Is that sometimes what maybe keeps you going? Like I feel something in me to create. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's been my entire life and it doesn't, and the funny thing is when I can't get that out, I feel terrible. Ah, like I yes. feel like I, I need to be doing something and I can't quite make it work. So yeah. God, I get it's, it. So <laughs> it's it's really frustrating. So yeah, I absolutely get that. Yeah. To yeah. me it's just exactly the way you described it. It's it's all the way I can I don't know. It's almost like somebody put a cork in something and there's all this pressure building mm -hmm. to just explode and that cork to come out and like all this stuff. Yeah. For me, it's not just art, you know, or creating like graphics and things. A lot. It could be writing, mm -hmm. even the show. It right. came from that feeling of there's, well, and this is weird maybe, <laughs> but I, I, I have this hunch that other people also feel the need to share who they are, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And so the show be kind of came out of that. It's like, you know, there's a whole other layer underneath that we're all maybe sort of on autopilot subduing to some mm -hmm. degree to get along and function and be a part of what needs to happen out in the world. But deep down, there's another layer yeah. that's like wants to come out mm -hmm. yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah interesting i don't know that that kind of keeps me up too i guess if i'd call it that just wanting to see it come to life right i'm usually um i wonder if you're this way or not i'm usually sort of like i call i always say it's like striking a match on a box when it comes to creating something once i have the idea i go from oh i got the idea i gotta draw it out I got to sit in and make it. And that whole time I, in my mind, I'm striking that match across the box and yeah. then it just happens. Yeah. And then it catches on fire and then I'm done with that. And then I got to go on to the, the next, next project. Yeah. I can't, for me, sitting with the one thing too long, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm finished with that. Yeah. And if I go on to something else for a while, that's okay with me. Like I can finish a project and go on to another similar project, but if it, if it repeats too long, I'm like, that itch again is going, okay, I'm doing this. I've done this. Yeah. I think mine is more, um, I guess when I get the idea and especially if it's something that I really want to do or feel strongly about, I have to do it immediately. And if I don't, it's not going to happen. So it's like I, uh, start at the beginning and I won't stop until it's done because I know most times if I do, it won't get finished. So I do get, um, I guess, wrapped up in that. So, I mean, there'll be hours at a time where I'll be sitting at a desk or at a computer and I will not stop until I, and even if it's like a series of several things, I won't stop until it's done or it'll bother me. <laughs> I'm the same way. I am exactly like that. I can tell you, like, the projects that are like that for me, especially logo work. I'm not always that way, I guess, whenever I'm with a client and they start talking about what they want, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that creative force, I can feel it go, oh, immediately my brain starts firing and I can start seeing, oh, I got this idea. Right. Uh, I see what I see ideas. I see how this could play out. And then by the time we're done talking, even though I'm engaged with them, I've already kind of seen the logo and kind of what I want it to do and how it could play out in all their branding. Right. If I catch that right then and immediately and they hire me, I'm the same way. I'll go sit down and I will just burn through that in yeah. like four hours and just yeah. be like, I'm good with this. It all just, it was born. Right. But it's like obsession almost. I've got <laughs> to get it out because if I stop and sleep on it, and I come back the next day, it's almost like the energy of it's just it's not trying same. to reharness it. It's not yeah, the same. Yeah. It's wild, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I, that's why I think, and I guess I, 
it's just a thought, but I think that's why it's sort of like uh, lightning in a bottle, they say, you know? Yeah. You got to catch it and ride it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I like those kinds of conversations. They get me excited. They make me want to create something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, you know, you'd think like in this business here that it would be like that every day. Because you would hope. But. You would hope, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I'm around creative people. And it's the same creative people, but I mean, there are times when we inspire each other and then there's times when we're off kind of working on our own, you know, right. for on different projects, depending on the deadline, really. Yeah. The deadline can mess things up. For sure. So how, how do you deal with that? Do you have deadlines? Um, no, no, not really. No, because I do. I mean, I guess it depends on what I'm doing. Everything that I do is for myself. So I mean, if, if there is a deadline, it's mostly because either I have had an idea for something and I want to get it finished before the next thing, whatever that thing is like an event or, um, usually that's what it is. It's an event. So that's really my only type of deadline. And if it doesn't happen, that's okay. Because two weeks later, there is another event. Right. So, I mean, I don't have really strict deadlines. Right. I got you. So your, your events are your deadlines Yeah. and it's a little different. Okay. So ours is a little more commercial. So, I mean, I would say there's right. probably a deadline every day, <laughs> God, but it's like, a, but it's, yeah, well, it's just different, <laughs> I guess. Cause it's advertising right. and media like that. But, um, I guess this show has a deadline. I mean, our goal is to launch it every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there, this is a little different, though, because right. it's softer touch, you know. Right. But uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, some, for some people, deadlines uh, invigorate them, you know, and they can work. And I, I will say in certain situations, probably, yeah, if, if it's everything lines up right. right and the energy comes, I got the idea. But if it's something where we're stuck. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, we'll be able to produce something. I've always said it this way. The technical skill will be good. Mm-hmm. The quality will be there. But will it be the best? Yeah. You know, creatively, I can't say that. It no. probably something else out there in the ether that we haven't quite ca- caught. <laughs> you know, because we just didn't have time. Right. You know. Yeah. So let me jump back here. So you say in the third grade, you're drawing cartoons, Looney Tunes, and then fast forward a little bit. Did that kind of stick around like through elementary school and junior high? I mean, where did that go? Um, I will say it was gone before high school. Gone. I don't, or yeah, I mean, and I don't know. Um, I can't pinpoint a time like elementary school. It was definitely there. Um, and I mean, I guess, at some point it was like all of those years but then i would say probably like 16 it kind of cut off like i wasn't i just wasn't doing it anymore was it because of something or just kind of doing school and just got lost interest I mean, or what i i don't know i mean I, not not anything that i can pinpoint so just kind of got yeah could just be youth you know right i mean and even once i graduate like i didn't go um back into even illustration until after I graduated. When I was in Suella, it was school. So this is what I'm doing. I'm doing ah. these things to get these grades to pass to graduate. I got you. So it wasn't until after that, when I had time to do what I wanted to do, that all of this kind of grew. I got you. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't couldn't even 25, 26 maybe is when I yeah. started doing that again it's interesting that is actually pretty interesting to get back <laughs> in because you know i've met other people there's some a guy here in sulfur who uh he was traditionally a piano player and a musician and then uh i think he he bought an ipad pro and started tinkering around with art and all of a sudden he found out he could draw <laughs> and i mean this is later in life and yeah. he's fairly good i mean like nice stuff so i think it surprises people sometimes they yeah. just lay something down yeah, well, so that's interesting. So you were mainly in there. You're you're thinking career, right? Absolutely. At that point, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I want. I've. I'll. My God, you probably will hate for me to tell the story, but uh, a good friend of mine. We were all talking about how we got into graphics design and, and you know anything creative like that. And uh, so he was working on a construction crew after high school, and he was like, "Man, this is hard work." <laughs> and somebody said he said he he liked to draw Ninja Turtles. Okay. 
And somebody said, oh, you draw Ninja Turtles good. You should go into graphic design. So he signed up at Sowella. <laughs> and then he became a, fa- a fairly good designer and a really great person to boot. But I love that story because it tells you that just like people come into this field out of all kinds of uh, different areas. And I mean, I think you can probably sit down, you know, 10 graphic designers and get 10 oh, different yeah. answers. For sure. I know there are a lot of people who get into this, I think, because they think it's going to be easy. I've, I've talked to people who are like, they get in and they're like, oh man, I'm out. Good, good. Why would you think this is easy? I think it's because it looks like it's, I mean, because look, graphic, sometimes I am blown away. People will ask me, and I mean, maybe you get this too, I don't know. They'll be like, so what do you do? Oh yeah. And I'm like, where do I start? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I could sit down for an hour and go in, I mean, probably I've forgotten all the things that we could really do. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I go, Wow. The best answer I've given someone, and it's probably came out of just getting sick, just irritation, honestly, if I'm being truthful. I was like, look around the world. Yeah. Just anywhere in this room. And the books on the shelf, the toys, the stickers, statue, package, TV, pickets. Yeah. Somebody designed it. Exactly. You're going to drive out of this parking lot and all the signs that are going to tell you how to go around your day. Graphic design. Yes. You're going to go grocery shopping. Graphic design. It is everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and people are not, I think that nobody thinks about no. that. It's become, so, we're like desensitized to it. Right. It's like when we, we go shopping at Kroger and I got so excited like a couple of years ago because I came back to work. I said, have you seen all the new Kroger brand product designs? Yes. I had a yeah. similar, um, um, <laughs> experience this was maybe four or five years ago and the i had gotten in the mail the um the flyer for market basket yeah and it was totally different and i remember i posted on facebook and i was like whoever designed this new thing <laughs> did an amazing job it's i was so, so excited. funny i mean it's nice though in one respect you go there's so many different la- layers to graphic design and i honestly think there's some heavily underappreciated industries yeah in there. i mean you know, even like those signs that you see on the interstate, the green ones, it's yeah. like, look, I mean, somebody's somebody's thinking about that. Somebody's going, well, I got to make sure the letters are the right size so someone can read it at right. this distance and it's the proper font and the proper spacing and the materials. That's all in there. And yeah. nobody's thinking. People are like, eh, we disregard it. Right. But yeah, I, I get it. I do the same thing. <laughs> we get a piece in the mail. You know, most people's like junk mail and we're mm-hmm. like going, oh, what's what is this? Let's see. Oh. Ooh, that looks nice, or yeah. uh, the paper, or, or the we, or a weird print size, and you just go. The consumer most probably just don't. Yeah, I'm the same way. So <laughs> I do it. We do it too. I mean, and there's some types of design that I, I'm not a fan of, or even strategies, you know, in advertising. That I mean, personally, I just go, eh, I don't like that. Right. I don't like it because it's kind of sneakier. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of the. One of the other guests and I were talking about this. It was uh, the pieces that come in the mail that look like a letter to you. Oh, yeah. I'm just not That's a just fan annoying. of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's deceptive. It's I deceptive. Think. <laughs> and the other thing that bugs me is because I'm, big, I'm a big believer that we need to slow down and we need to talk to each other and we need to write notes to each other right. and we need to do things that are more tactile and, you know, in the real world face to face versus just all digital and so right. fast right so a handwritten note when i get one i mean i, I got one <laughs> behind me here but it's hanging up because it's like a treasure yeah those types of tactics teach you that that's junk right over time you go oh it's another piece of junk it's another piece of junk that's not cool yeah it's I not cool that. to play on that you know it's <laughs> like taking a, a nice thing and turn it into a bad thing you know yeah so i don't know and i'm happy I know it. You've probably heard me mention filming videos, building websites, creating logos, or building brands on this podcast. Well, there's a good reason for that. I'm a brand builder, and my brand is Parker Brand Creative Services. My team and I have built countless brands in the Gulf Coast region, and a lot of our work in the travel and tourism industry is experienced across the country, and honestly, the whole world. We have our specialties, web, logo, package, and whole brand design, as well as video production and photography. But the reality is we function as a full service advertising agency to businesses that don't really mesh well with larger advertising agencies or just don't want to have in-house creative departments. But don't listen to what I say. Just go to our website, 
parkerbrandup.com and take a look at what we do. We're a show it, don't say it team. Okay, you should definitely say it too, but you know what I mean. That's parkerbrandup.com. We think sideways, we push forward, and we'll get your brand up. So take this, you've earned it, a melody. Anyway, so back to you. Uh, <laughs> you so you, you get through Sewella. Who was your instructor? Oh, Jessen. Jessen, okay. Yeah, so um, he was he taught most of my classes. And then um, I had Miss Bo for my um, illustrator class. So oh. She taught me illustrator. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Jessen was most of my... Um, my teaching. Yeah. yeah. And so what was that like for you? Did you, the things that you learned in that class, I mean, do you still feel like you, any of that influenced your art or do you feel like it was more technical? Oh, well, I would say both because, yeah. okay. um, I learned illustrator first. So in Miss illustri- Bo's class. Yeah. So okay. that was uh, in the first semester. Uh, that's the fir- one of the first classes I took was illustrator. So that's the only thing I use now. I can't, I, I can use Photoshop, I can get around, but as far as like for artwork, I will not use Photoshop. So you're straight, you're mostly 90% Illustrator? I mean, I, I 99% Illustrator. Oh, really? I've done one um, illustration, I guess, in Photoshop. Wow. And that was one of the very first ones that I did, which kind of started this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, Illustrator is where it's at <laughs> I, I tend to agree but do you go is that like your phase one and then do you bring it in photoshop to do like textures and things no. so you do all that in illustrator no phase one is sketchbook sketchbook right yeah. on so, so you're going then, and everything good. else after that is digital and it's an illustrator nice everything <laughs> okay I, was, I, I wondered about that because i look at your art and i saw i can see the vector work mm-hmm. but I, I see like textures and things oh, like yeah. that too so i didn't know if you how you were processing that's that. all brushes um, okay brushes and textures that's all that um, that is. I really like those pieces that you've got out there. That they just have a vintage quality to yeah. them, you know. Especially the Louisiana thing. That's my stuff. favorite compliment. I love vintage things. Do you? I vintage wondered everything. if. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wondered if that would be a compliment or not. Because sometimes oh, yeah. when yeah, well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Because sometimes you say that to somebody and they're they're like, I don't know. I, I didn't think that about my work. You know, no. you got to be careful. Oh no, I know 100. percent And actually, with that. Um, series i guess it was intentional that's kind of what i was trying to go for so i'm glad that i made that work yeah that it's obvious what inspired you to go that way and and focus on the state and the area and things like that um actually the first this was i kind of started as a um a reworking because i had done a a lake charles poster in i want to say 2015 maybe or 16 and it was totally different it was I mean sort of the same style but different colors and everything and that one kind of got old I guess I got tired of looking at that one so um I decided to rework that one it's not the same at all but it was a Lake Charles poster so I um I redid that one that was the first one um and uh, the rest of them I guess just kind of grew out of that because it wasn't something that I planned to do yeah I guess it was just an idea that I had and um so the next one I pretty sure was the um just the Louisiana with the giant pelican on it and then um I'm trying to remember how many I have I think I have four and then um Acadiana that came out of me just going to because I do the um, Lafayette Art Market every. Month. Oh, okay. So you shifted your yeah, focus. Okay. Yeah. So I did that one for that reason, just because I go there so much. And then the Calcasieu came because after I had, or when I was in the middle of doing those, um, a friend that I went to high school with was like, "Hey, I've had this idea for this poster." For Calcasieu, and she kind of sent me this picture, like drawing and um, what she was thinking. I was like, "Yes, I can definitely do that because I'm already working on things that look like this. So that's not a problem for me to take on this idea that you have. I can totally do that." So that actually came from her idea, and it came. I mean, it's turned out to be one of the more popular ones. Is that Calcasieu one? I think just because it encompasses so much. It's not just you know the Lake Charles or. Acadiana, it's right. everything. It's De Quincey, it's Sulphur, it's all of those things. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, yeah. I thought of you the other day. I encountered a clothing company on um, Instagram that I'd never seen before called, uh, in fact, there are stickers on the fishbowl here. <laughs> it's called America Clothing Company. 
But what they do is they do apparel for different states and regions. Oh, okay. And uh, they have a really simple kind of vintage look, but it was for all these different places. I mean, the Rocky Mountains, okay. you know, all these state parks. It's really kind of a neat... You should go check it out, actually. Okay, I'll check it out. But... Uh, I thought of you. I was like, oh, man, I could totally see your work uh, flowing into what they do for apparel because yeah. it just, I don't know. Deb, do you do apparel? Um, I do. I have. Well, just, you had the Chuck. Yeah. Chuck. So that's the only one that I, I have right now. Seems so. like it's popular. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't. I, I think I underestimate um, people's interest in what Maybe. I do because mm-hmm. I that that whole thing actually started off as um it wasn't intentional i that was one of the very few things that i've actually done that didn't start off as a sketch that was like i'm gonna use this font because i i paid money for a font it was 15 dollars. and listen i'm not about wasting money <laughs> <laughs> right so it's like i'm gonna put this font on everything so um that's where it started from from that font and it kind of just grew um from there and then everybody liked it and i was like oh this would be cool on a shirt so sure. i you know put it on a shirt and then i ordered 30 shirts and 30 shirts was not enough i learned that real fast <laughs> yeah so um yeah that's the only the only clothing thing i have right now man just listening to you say that i mean we work in travel and tourism that's our yeah. biggest yeah. um i guess our biggest focus here what and it depends on your client you know i mean mm-hmm. of course that we have a client that's in that but uh as i hear i saw that design and then i started seeing the interest and i thought man she could do a whole series for this area yeah of course that's me thinking like the like if it was me and my and mine (laughs) and she worked for me you know all that but i was like man she could totally do like a whole a whole line of things for this area that's like you know they get the creole nature trail and call it like give it a nickname and call it something think about all the things that we say here and do like focus pieces that are all the nicknames you know that'd be Hmm. freaking cool and man you better (laughs) you should do that is what i'm thinking before i do it no i'm not gonna do it i just think it's cool though i mean that's uh, i do think that it fits what you're doing and it kind of plays into what you're already kind of putting out there so yeah i wondered about that that clothing company just made me think of you it was kind of uh serendipitous because i think i had reached out to you and then i had gotten a coupon or something from them (laughs) we were looking at different sticker designs and stuff and uh i landed on them and i was like oh that's interesting because i wouldn't i don't want to say it's the same right i don't mean it that way but it was just something about it right. that just resonated with your work, I think. It just kind of echoed it a little bit. But check it out. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you said something earlier that I is I can't get out of the back of my oh, head. Gosh. and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Because it's something I, uh, I was listening to another podcast today. And it kind of relates a little bit. But uh, I don't know. Let me just tell you what okay. it is. You said um, being good enough. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Right. And so the thought occurred to me earlier when you said that, how would you know if you're good enough? <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, what, I are you, what are you using to gauge that? Because, look, I'll throw these things at you. Okay. And I don't want to dominate because you're here. No. You're the guest. But here's just what I think. Because okay. there's all these ways you can gauge that. Right. right. You can go. Well, I'll know I'm good enough when people buy my work. Okay. That's one. And by them buying my work, they're saying they like my right. work, right? I'll know I'm good enough if everything I post gets a lot of responses. Mm-hmm. I'll know I'm good enough whenever I get so many orders on my site. I'll know I'm good enough when people start asking me to go to the XYZ show. And that I'm just throwing that out there because everybody... I mean, the Addies, okay? People yeah. will go, I'll know I'm good enough when I get a best of show at the Addies. Right. They're all different, and they all have different ways of interacting with you. But for you, you know, where is that? What what is what are those things? I would say every one of those things you just listed would be, um, you know, if that were the uh, the response, I guess I would say, yeah, maybe I am good enough. But then tomorrow it starts over. So I mean, every day, <laughs> it, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I could get. You know, someone um, order 500 things. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome for that day. And then like three days later, I'm like, oh, no, this isn't this isn't good. I need to get back up there, I guess, like the um, with the the wholesale count that I um, account that I got in New Orleans. That was an amazing day. Like, I mean, I was riding that high for about a week and now I'm like, okay, well, now I need to get more. 
So, yeah. I mean, it, and I, maybe that's just me. I, and that's going to be a terrible thing to say, but I will never feel like I'm good enough. No, I think so. you're, I, <laughs> I actually suffer and maybe not suffer, but I kind of, I'll say it that way. I suffer from the same thing, you know, I mean, <clears throat> and I'll use the Addies as an example. And that's maybe unfortunate. I don't know. There's all kinds of different opinions about this, but I've never really cared so much about getting recognition or awards. Mm -hmm. Um, what really for me worked to tell me, I, I guess uh, am good enough is when people, I can sense that they actually are getting something out of it. So if I finish a project and I, then the client says, I love this and I'm going to use it here, here, here. And then you see them take the brand out or whatever. And you're going, Oh, they're driving this car right now. Right. And now it's, and it's running still. Mm hmm the awards and stuff like somebody else that might be a gauge i've got best of shows and right. i've been to nationals and all this stuff that stuff just never stuck for me it was sort of like a flash in the pan right you get it and then it would just go away so fast and yeah. nobody look i'm gonna tell you nobody cares that that glass is sitting there people <laughs> walk in and out of here and nobody ever looks at it yeah and i don't even look at it and i'm like you know that's a shame really but on what but on the other hand it's like well that that's not a good gauge and i realized pretty quickly after entering a few times and, and getting some glass and you know getting some recognition i was like this goes away so quickly yeah. it's for me it was empty yeah it just was an empty feeling so i couldn't use that as a as a gauge. i i'm good enough i was like it's got to be another thing out there and i don't i'm like you i don't know it's thing to thing yeah because you know, there could be a project that comes in here and it happens where i go well this doesn't really fit my skill set, but I could probably try. Right. And maybe if I, and a lot of times that's what happens. We try it and we go, oh, we can do this. Mm -hmm. But, but, but at that moment when it comes in, I go, am I good enough? You know, <laughs> so it's still there. It's like a little phantom lingering yeah. around, you know, whispering, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you can do this. Yeah. Have I you had that. projects that you've taken though, like that, where you go, I don't know, but then you do it and you're like, oh. I did it. Um, I, I can say that I have. I can't pinpoint anything now, but I I know that there have been times where I kind of I have to say yes before I talk myself out of it. And that's not just with, you know, taking on projects. That's with a lot of things. <laughs> like, even with this, like, when you messaged me, I was like, yes, and I and let's do this fast so I will not have time to think about it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's it's kind of like you say yes and then figure it out. Right. So I, I know for a fact I've done that with, you know, quite a few um, projects. But again, I couldn't pinpoint anything now. What about fans? So, you oh know, gosh. you're 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 a becoming <laughs> a known artist in the Lake area in a time where it's a lot easier to get yourself out there. And that may takes a lot of work. Yeah. But um you know, used to people had to kind of depend on galleries and things like right. that. But there's now there's tons of events that you can go to right. and be seen and interact with people. But what balance is there of that where it's like, it's my art, yes, but it's also me, Denisha. Um, is there a lot of that for you where people go, oh, I want to know you and meet you? Is that tied into your, your yeah, art? Yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like with what I do, it's like I'm I'm trying to... Um, of course, sell what I have, but then I'm also selling myself. Yeah, I feel like that is that kind of matters over everything. Because I mean, you know, people aren't going to buy things or respond to someone that they don't like. So I kind of, in that sense, that yeah, like I'm definitely selling myself. <laughs> mm. I just wonder about that. I mean, yeah, that's that's interesting because. I think about that with design work here sometimes. I go, well, if I took the piece and just sat it out all by itself, nobody knows who's done it. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the story. They've not seen who produced it, anything. Right. Does it stand up on its own? Yeah. You know, does it stand up without the injection of personality and brand right. and all that stuff? Right. I, I just wonder those things about our own work. And then I just wonder if you... I think we live in an age where <clears throat> that's difficult now for a piece of art to just stand on its own, right. you know, and just be obscure and no, not knowing who the artist is. I think we like, I like art more knowing. Yeah. You I know. mean, I think, I think that's a normal 
a normal thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that like when I show someone a piece, and if it's somebody I know, I'll go, "Oh, such and this is." Before I even say, "Do you like this?" If yeah. someone's staring at, it, I'll just go, "Oh, that's a such and such. She right. did that, or he did that." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I tend to like things like that. I want to know the people, and it's almost impossible. I don't know uh, to not have that element. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible, I guess, to separate the separate the two because I mean, even with um, like in the artwork, you can, like you said, like you, things that are recognizable, you can look at something and say, "Oh, I know who did that." So that's like a part of that person in that artwork. Yeah. So, how much of uh looking at your style and what you're doing how does that how does that reflect you if it's a mirror to you your art oh gosh um uh i don't know i guess it's it's never the same oh okay <laughs> um like i said it it changes and so I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, as far as like everything that I, almost everything I do, I think has a lot of um, color in it, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, I, I just like, I like colors. I like things that are bright and things that are fun. So I think that's probably the, the most obvious. Um, and then of course the, the vintage element in a lot of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed online uh, one thing I like, and it's interesting because it does seem like a part of your art is you uh your outfits that you <laughs> have been posting yeah that's um i mean that i i feel like that in itself probably could be an art form i don't know it seems like uh, it is i mean i w just wanted to ask you if that was a part of are you do is that a part of your personality oh for sure 100 percent. like and that's um it's gotten to the point now where I mean, it's a thing that I like to do, but then also, like, speaking of, like, events and stuff, like, I I won't say obsessed, but I think a lot about what I'm going to wear. Yeah. And I think, and it's gotten to the point where it almost is recognizable. Like, I have people who I don't know that'll, you know, come up and they're like, oh, I know you from this because of this thing that you were wearing. Like, I had um some oh gosh i can't think of who she is now but we were in a bank like in a mortgage company or something and i don't remember what i was wearing and she was like oh i know you <laughs> <laughs> um and she's like your artwork and everything and i love your dress and i was like okay um so yeah it's definitely it's gotten to be part of it it wasn't intentional it just i mean it just happened i guess it's interesting because i mean it's part creative expression but it's a part also um giving your fans what they want to right i mean it's like a little bit of celebrity involved I, right i gosh, mean i would I say <laughs> i think so i mean i think people have expectations right yeah, i mean you, yeah. you want to go that's true you know they, they go oh well i mean i'm going there they know you're going to be there right right I, that makes sense because i i imagine if i were to do an event and i was there like like i just left the gym which i am every day and i look like a troll and they're like no that's not that's not what i expected to see i don't like yeah. that at all <laughs> i don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily i no. mean it's kind of if, if it's especially if it's in the spirit of creativity and yeah. fun right it'd be different if it was um <clears throat> maybe pretentious oh, or it no. was like just real fake and it's like yeah. i'm just doing this to no I, sell my art you know no, no no i i couldn't no i couldn't do that <laughs> yeah i get that totally what about your children are any of them creative how many kids do you have i have two, two. i have two boys uh, oh two boys yeah well how uh, old are they 13 and okay. the youngest one will be nine in december so junior high and elementary yeah yeah, yeah. okay so wow. um they <laughs> they are but i would say that they're creativity isn't the same hmm. like my uh my oldest son he, he'll draw every once in a while and especially when he was in elementary school he would draw a lot like they would have i guess breaks in between whatever they were doing and he would have notebooks and he'd come home and these notebooks are full of robots and everything yeah. and there was one um he'd come home and it was like a robot shooting lasers out of its <laughs> eyes and i was yeah. like yeah this is exactly what i expect from that kid <laughs> yeah it so sounds pretty cool you know, robots lasers i get it. I, okay. yeah so and actually i saw in one of the <laughs> sketchbooks in his room it was um i'm pretty sure it was the older one it the title underneath it says frank gwen so it's like frankenstein penguin 
<laughs> so uh so yeah he's he he definitely has it in there kids are interesting with their creativity i think it's fun my son's the same way he likes to draw and uh his technical skill, you know, that gets better with anybody right. who does it a lot, I think. And it's getting better. But what I love the most is what you just said is like <laughs> the weird mashups and concepts. And, and when sometimes I'll sit there and you, and you look at a drawing for a little while and you're like, I don't really know what's going on here. And then when he does come to it, you go, hey, I love that drawing, you know, yeah. on the table. And then he's like, oh, yeah. OK, so. And then there's like this whole story, story yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, this is cool, man. It, yeah. it, it really is. My daughter, she's a really good artist, and uh, I'm always hoping she listens to this show because, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've tried, you know, want her to be motivated to pursue it, you know, right. to actually let go and pursue it. She's really, really got a lot of technical skill and creativity, but for for me, I saw that manifest in her pretty early on, yeah. and I'll tell you, this is one of the, my favorite stories about her. <clears throat> I was living in Natchitoches, Louisiana, and I don't know, she probably was maybe five, four probably five anyway she was a messy kid i mean <laughs> destructive right and wild and one night at the kitchen table she had gotten a stack of slight cheese slices okay. you know just like cheese pack and she was i walk in there and she's got the whole cheese pack on the table and they're all open and there's bits of cheese all over with bites taken out Gosh. of them. And they're all stacked up on the table. And I was like, Lily, you know, <laughs> I lost it. I was like, what are you doing? And I fussed at her. Yeah. And then she kind of got upset and walked off. And then I started unstacking all those cheeses. <laughs> And she had bitten off the edges of each of those cheese squares, and she was making the states. Oh, God. It was like a map of the United States. It was like Louisiana-shaped cheese, a Texas cheese, <laughs> you know, a Mississippi cheese. I was like, oh, and she hadn't finished, but there was, oh, and that's gosh. what it was, this mess. And I thought oh, she was geez. just being bad, you know, yeah. like just jacking up all the, the whole box of cheese. Cheese is not cheap. <laughs> and I was like, man, I felt so bad. And that was like, for me, one of those early like mm -hmm. signs, like she's thinking in a whole different way. Yeah. You know? And I mean, now granted, she, she was wild. And I mean, it made sense that it would have just been cheese, you know? Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. It's just interesting when you see those kinds of things in kids at a young age. I think sometimes it gets stamped out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you support like creativity in your kids? I'm assuming. I, yeah. I mean, I try to. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, I guess just because of what I do. I mean, sure. I don't, when I was a kid, I didn't have, no one else in my family was an artist or any type really? of okay. arts. Yeah. Um, not at all. So I think so that's, that's kind just of, you. No, your yeah, parents weren't. That's and, just me. <laughs> wow. So I think that's, um, I guess it's, that's where that comes from. Just try to support that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like either of them are going to go that way or is it too early to tell? Maybe. I think with the older one, maybe. Because, yeah. and I think it'll probably be graphic art just because oh. he he's seen what I do for, um, I guess, since he was maybe five. Yeah. So, I mean, he's kind of, he's seen where i started maybe actually uh, i didn't i wasn't doing anything and then kind of grew into this so there's and he's also really good with computers and like technical yeah. stuff like that i mean robots so uh um, <laughs> right. so there, there's a chance there yeah i always wondered that too i, I didn't wasn't sure what my daughter was going to do and, and really she's not working in art or design right now but i i, I just expect someday something will come from it my uh my middle boy very creative actually they all are pretty creative but they're all have their own sort of focus mm -hmm. like my middle boy's like yours i expect he'll probably do something creative but he likes more um fashion design oh okay cool and video production he's yeah. really good at video editing actually <laughs> put him uh, to work <laughs> well no he doesn't want to do he doesn't want to do advertising i oh, mean he okay. doesn't and it's funny because i mean i've asked him do you think graphic design and i don't think it's there for him he doesn't mm -hmm had the interest but he has other creative interests yeah but he actually changed our direction a few years ago um and this was when he was in junior high school he was doing was back when vine was around okay yeah and he would edit these vine videos in his bedroom on his mac and he was some of that editing i mean coming out of a video production we do a lot of that yeah. right and so i would get home and he, i'd see all these vines i was like man how is he 
doing them first so quickly and then just the quality of what was coming out they were very high level right you know and i even said hey you need to make us some stuff i want to see like for our bar brand anyway i asked him what he was using and he was using final cut pro and we typically stuck with stayed in the adobe okay ecosystem you know Mm -hmm. premiere and um, after effects and stuff like that but his production speed in his bedroom was so much faster and what he was able to do it was cooler looking and i said man i I don't know i need to go research why that is is it just my the way i design versus the way he designs what is it and actually what i found was a lot of it was the software i mean he not that he wasn't skilled but the software was just more intuitive and so we said well let's invest in it and we actually quit using premiere Oh wow! We just got out for for video production. We just left it behind. Yeah. And started doing everything in Final Cut. It was like one project at a time, but we just switched. I imagine Premiere. From what I remember, it's 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 a lot. It's really bulky. So yeah, it's bulky. That's <laughs> it was a blo- it's bloated, and that's probably good in a lot of ways. But I'm for sure. us, I felt like for a little more gut gut editing mm-hmm. and uh, the ability to just do some creative things really right, quickly. Right. Uh, yeah, Final Cut was just more intuitive for mm-hmm. me. I don't know. I mean, there are other people who would probably disagree. I mean, I know that Premiere is the main program that's really taught in school, but we just, I don't know. It didn't take much to get off of Premiere after that. Maybe a a year of doing both, and then we've left it behind. I still have older projects, you know, that I have to touch every once in a while, but anything new. Yeah. I don't know. So do you ever feel like you're... uh, that you're going to see a big shift or you're going to you're going to shift into something different i mean as far as the the way you design or are you just going to kind of just continue to sharpen the adobe illustrator i i I, at this point i can't see any reason that i would change yeah so that's like your samurai sword oh yeah you got one and that's it you're going straight for it yeah i mean i and even i thought um recently um because procreate is really big you know yeah. so and i was like oh maybe that's something that i want to try procreate and then um i i haven't done much research into that and i think i had saw that someone said that procreate is raster and i was like uh, i can't i was like yeah. i'm vector all the way like i can't like even the it looks cool but just in my head i'm like i can't do i can't yeah. do raster please give me my vectors all day <laughs> I, I agree i mean uh i recently we're working on uh some sticker packs here okay. for, to promote the show and you know, when we came up with the show, some of the things we were we wanted to be just like an all encompassing show. You can talk mm-hmm. about life, death, art, right, whatever. So if you look in the backgrounds of things, you'll see all these little symbols like eyeballs and brains. And, yeah. And I was like, because so, we really wanted to just be whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, everything. So we decided, well, over time, what we'll do is we'll make a new sticker every couple of months, and one will be like each of those symbols that are right. in the background. So we all took one. My wife's doing an anchor, and Nicole's doing uh the microphone and okay. i decided to do a skull that skull is awesome well thanks god i, love I that. don't get to do that enough though you see that's yeah. what i'm talking about like what you're doing i love to hear because i fear if i don't do things like that because i mean honestly it may not happen but once or twice a year I, we do mostly what the client yeah. asks for and a lot of times design right now in the commercial side of things is it's um flat i mean it's um usually a big photo which is good but it means you need to take a nice photo right which we do but i prefer to do a little more design Mm -hmm. and a lot of times now it's just a big photo with some little branding elements you know but yeah getting to do a heavy illustration piece in vector yeah you know yeah i'm all about that (laughs) one of the logos i had done that was a lot of fun what that was like that and i guess i you got me thinking maybe i might have a style i mean it's broad in the sense that we get to do a lot i mean you can mm-hmm. look at the table there's all, it's all over the place but if i sit down to do a logo it's probably going to be a little more illustrative mm-hmm. it's going to have like a creature or right. something like that skull you know where there's some color i'm the yeah, same way i yeah. like a lot of color i like looser stuff you know yeah i'm not too big on up up and down left and right no you know mm-hmm. it has to have some movement yeah yeah well what about inspirations i mean are you inspired by anybody particularly um i'm not really sure i mean i have like um illustrators that i i'll follow on social media so sure. a lot of um there's a lot of that i mean i could probably name names but i'm sure i would forget some um 
Uh, let's see. Oh, ha- do you know of Brave the Woods? There. Um, I don't. The guy's name is Brad Woodard or Woodward, something like that. Um, and he, I don't think that he's in Austin anymore, but they were. Um, and the, God, they do amazing work. It's such good. Now, what work. kind of work is it? What is it? Um, it's. Um, they do illustrations and they do a lot of branding too, but it okay. also has a lot of that um, vintage yeah. element and textures and things like that. So they um, they do a lot of that. Um, and actually, none of them thinking about it. Everybody is kind of in the same. <laughs> I was actually going to say that. I well, I was going to ask you that next. You're you're actually got my brain spinning here. So that is a it's becoming even more of a trend if it isn't yeah. already i mean you've just i've just seen it become more and more of a thing to have like a, a lived in and i hate to use the word hipster because no. some people take it wrong but i mean it's a style right yeah. there's like a hipster slash vintage you know mm-hmm. a craft yeah craft yeah, yeah, style yeah. Gotcha. right yeah. so that's very popular it is um and it has been for i would say a few years so yeah, i wouldn't sure. be surprised if it was almost on its way out or overdone i wonder too yeah um yeah i don't i don't know how that's going to end up i I don't i don't imagine that i would change anything i'm doing but yeah i wonder about that too you know it's kind of like uh it's funny it's uh, you hear people say things like this at different points it's kind of like when i was in high school skateboarding was really popular Mm -hmm. and then everybody wanted to ride skateboards and then you had the guys who were riding skateboards two years before the new guys and they're like all these guys just they're wannabes or posers you know and then you'll have these guys that are like i was wearing a beard before beards were cool (laughs) you know and then when these guys are shaving when it's not cool anymore i'm still going to be wearing you know that kind of thing so it's probably going to be i wonder about that with design is it going to be that way it's almost what you're saying hey i'm going to keep doing this right I, even when the trend i think if it's like with the um the guy that i was telling you about brave of the woods i think when it's done well and consistently then it's not gonna matter what right. everyone else is doing <clears throat> or you know what direction design is going i mean you do what you're good at and that what you're known for so i think um you know in some of those ways it'll it'll stick around that's really smart and honestly i think it's pretty authentic and honestly brave because <laughs> I don't know that I'm that courageous. I mean, I would like to say that I am, but I mean, I think that if we tightened down and refined and said, oh, we're only going to do, right? seek us out for this, t- like that skull. I'll use that in exa- mm-hmm. as an example. I could do that all day, every day of the week because I think it's fun. I probably am better at that right? Um, coming up with like stuff like that. But if I said, hey, that's my niche, that's all I'm doing, I promise yeah. you, the phone stops ringing. Oh, yeah. And then, sure. you know, all of a sudden it's like, uh oh. Yeah. You know, now I'm doing something else and that's for fun. Right. You know, so I think it's hard when you have to make a, a job out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what is your husband? Uh, what's his story? Is he. Is he an artist too? No, he's not. Okay. He's not, he's not an artist and um, I don't. Um, when we got married, I don't think he expected. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He had no idea what he was getting into, so he's kind of um, <laughs> adapted, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, okay. Like I said, I can get um, invested and obsessed with things, and so it, 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 I imagine I'm probably not very easy to live with at times. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all probably have some version of that story. Yeah. You know, I mean, I actually, that's interesting. So this is a whole other territory. But uh, Nicole and I were just talking about that right before the show. <laughs> you, you showed up and I said, you know, it's it's the people that are closest to you tend to they see all the sides of you. Oh, yeah. You know, so <laughs> they have to learn or learn or, or maybe it's one of their uh, beautiful traits is that they love you. Even Despite. though they see you all the time and they see all the terrible things. Right. And I said, you know, it's weird because if you really reflect on that, those are the people, if they're seeing all of your worst stuff too, those are the people that uh, that you care about the most, but they should probably love you the least, oh, right? Yeah. Because they're seeing. Oh, and, and so if you're, a, <laughs> if you're a self-conscious person like I am, yeah. you're going, those people probably hate me the most. Oh, yeah. Like deep down. You know, yeah. and at the top of the pyramid, like my wife, then my son, and then you go down that list. I'm like, man, that's all the closest people to me. 
these are the people I fear don't like me the yeah, most, like, right? Why are you even sticking around? This is insane. Yeah, <laughs> but there's somewhere in the middle there. There's those other people who kind of just get the best parts of you because yeah. they're only with you briefly, mm-hmm. you know. And so there's like, I don't know, there's just like layers of perception out there. It's like, oh, someone could go, I like Or, and he, he's nice. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, and then somebody else at the top that cares about me a lot's like, I don't know, he can be a real, mm, you know. I almost feel like mine <laughs> is the the opposite, I guess. And people are like, oh, like, she's so nice. And we, you know, you're nice and you're cool. And I'm like, really? I, <laughs> yeah. I don't see what you see, but I mean, okay, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I mean, I do. I'm like, I know there are people in that whole pyramid for me as I really meditate on. I'm like, oh, these people probably really don't like me. Mm-hmm. You know, but those are the ones, a lot of times it's my own fault because I don't want them to. <laughs> I don't know how to put it the other way. No, it's like I don't care. I really don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I like this kind of thing because (laughs) I, uh, you get to see, you get to sit and just dig with somebody and and reflect on those types of things. Yeah. As a creative person who's producing something, and maybe some people are different. You know, it. I think it shows in what you're making. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I definitely can. It's interesting. I'd never really thought about this before till just now but i'll bet you if i go through my client list and associated the work with the client Mm -hmm. i could see my least favorite projects will be the (laughs) ones that i probably didn't have a great relationship with the client because we as people just didn't we weren't meant to be in a relationship right. together. Right. You know, do you, I mean, yours is different, I guess, because you're not doing, I mean, maybe not like tons of commission work, right? Yeah. Oh, no, not at so all. So it's for you. You said that on recently on TV. You oh, said, yeah. hey, I do art for me and hope you like it, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. See, I, ours is different. I do art for the client trying to do something that's what they've told me they want. Right. So it's like, a, um, we've compared it to a performance. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of what we're doing is we're getting data for it, information from a client, and then we've got to try to interpret it and then add our own creativity into that and then show them something and go, do you like it? And yeah. then we may love it. And then they're like, that's not really what I had in my mind. And you're going, man, I don't even know. Yeah. Like That's so stressful to me. It's a lot of rise and <laughs> fall, rise and fall. And then you... you it's a strange thing because you have to pull back that creativity, yeah. get it back in there. It's like if they don't love it or if you if you love it and then they like some of it. Yeah. But they don't like the colors. And then, I, you know, one of the things that we tend to hear, which I've always kind of chuckled at, was uh, uh, they'll you show something to a client that you've kind of put your heart and soul in you've i mean you've tailored everything Mm -hmm. the design the choices and fonts uh the color everything and then you go do you like it and they're like i like this part but not this part i don't like the lettering and honestly that's not my i don't like those colors and you go okay what would you like just you know and professionally you say what would you like and they go you know what you just show me what you like and you're like ah but that is what i'm doing right that this i've shown you what i like now right so it's as a creative you have to go back to the drawing board and then it takes a little bit like i mean how how do you read someone else's that uh, i can't that just that stresses me out (laughs) you know and there are there are um designers that just can't do that yeah. They just like forget it then, yeah. And they're done. And I, I'm like, man, that would that would be me. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't because I mean, and it's just like you said when you you have something, you're like, this is a thing that I love and I think it's really good, and then they shoot it down, and you're like, oh, <laughs> now what? Yeah, because this in my <clears throat> this was opinion it. was yeah, this is all I got. So. <laughs> yeah, that happens to us a lot. I mean, I would say you know, fifty fifty. I mean, most of the stuff that. uh well, I'll give it to you this way. It's kind of like those Addies. Mm-hmm. You know, when I look at that, I don't go, awesome, I did this. I look at it, and I if the name of the project's on there, I know the whole history of the thing. Yeah. And so what maybe was put in the show, which was what... Um, was, was what ran, mm-hmm. right? It has right. to have been out in the wild, so to speak. That could have been not what we had originally yeah. you know put out there. I got a logo that I did that changed animals. 
Okay. Okay. And I wouldn't enter it. And everybody's like, oh, you should have entered that. It would have done well. And everybody loves this logo. And it's on a lot of stuff. And everybody likes it. And I like it, too. I mean, yeah. honestly, it, <laughs> I like it. Okay, okay. But it wasn't that animal. Okay. It was actually an animal that you have in one of your favorite pieces that you did. I gotcha. Okay. Right? And it was that for a while. And then huh. out of the blue, one day, it was... The name's changed, and now it's this animal. Okay. And it had to be done in 24 hours. Oh, my word. <laughs> so I had to take the style from the other animal and try to make it work for the other, this right. new animal. And I was like, <laughs> and it had to be ready for a presentation the next day. And it was so fast mm -hmm. that I felt like now when people tell me, man, I'm, oh, y'all did that. Um, we get a lot of work from it, right? Yeah. But people just don't know yeah. that i really just was like I, this isn't what i was this yeah. wasn't what i was doing yeah isn't that crazy it is and i feel like i know that there, i've had a similar experience and i can't think of what it is but I, i've definitely done that like this is something that's really good and i like it and then having to change it and everyone's like oh this is so great and i'm like no i could have done much better than that yeah <laughs> So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's weird, man. I mean, this is, you know, I think it, anytime you're mixing uh, art in business or mm -hmm. commerce or anything, it's just going to be a give and take. Yeah. Especially if you're going to make a living out of it, you right. just have to make concessions. But there are people that just aren't willing to do it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Um, has anybody really, since you decided to go on this path, has anybody been influential in like your success? I mean, like that you go, oh, this, this changed things for oh, me. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I don't really know. I guess the start of it was, um, like I was telling you, the first illustration that I had done in Photoshop was, and it, you probably have seen it, this was four or five years ago almost now, was a, um, it was a snail, it was snails, mushrooms, and it was a green kind of olive background. Oh, and yeah, I've orange. seen that, yeah. So that was the first thing that I kind of really put out there. I had um, entered it into the um, the Thrive Magazine thing. Yeah, it was like a, and, did they do like a calendar, yes, right? Okay, calendar. I remember seeing so, that. And everybody loved this thing. So, and that, I think, um, and they actually told me they had um, a artist reception type thing and they were like, this is the one that we like the most out of all of the, um, the you know, the entries that we got. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So um, that was the beginning, I guess, of all of this was because even at that time, I don't think, um, I don't think I was working full time. So it, it hadn't been that long that I had graduated. And I got, guess I got so many compliments on that. And I was like, oh, okay, you guys like this stuff that I draw? You want to see more of this? Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, yes. So I was like, okay, so that's kind of how that started. Um, so that and shifted then, things, made like a hinge, right? And you kind of yeah, shifted a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm just trying to think of things that I guess people liked, maybe, and that that might also have something to do with it. Like the um, another one of the big first big things I did was the uh, poster for banners. I can't mm -hmm. remember. That might have been before the... I don't know. Um, anyway, so I did the post... And that was also a contest thing that I had won. I did the poster oh, okay. for that. And actually, when I, I had the idea for it, and I had it all sketched out, and I think I had even gotten to, um, I guess, what I thought was probably pretty close to the final um, the final pro uh, product or whatever. So, and I'd actually went to Soella. I brought it to Jess, and I was like, listen, look at this. <laughs> tell me what you think about this and so and he did and um he's like well maybe move this over here and then this and so he i kind of adopted him as my mentor like i didn't tell him i was just like oh here you're gonna help me with these things that i, <laughs> that I need so i mean there's been a couple of times where i have had to go to him and be like hey what do you think about this how could this improve so um i think 
as far as like influence, I would say he's probably a pretty big. Yeah, with well, um, being an instructor like that yeah. too. I mean, that's a formative uh, relationship, right? Yeah, like I said, I mentor. I didn't tell him he was going to be my mentor. I just adopted him, and yeah. that's kind of where you know. I think going. we have people like that in our life that we go, look, I trust this person's opinion, right, right. And advice. Sure. Yeah. I mean, even whether for art and otherwise. Yeah. Something that you did say just a second ago that I think finds interesting, and and you said it a couple of times, oh, you may not even realize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not trying to call you out, but it makes me think about how little things shift our life without us maybe realizing it. I don't think many of us sit down and say, people liked this. I'm going to change what I'm doing mm-hmm. to get more people to like it. Yeah. But you did say that a couple of times. Yeah. And in, in influencing. Well, I did this and then people responded positively. And right. so I'm, oh, I'm going to do more of that. Did you like consciously do that? Did you sit down and go, they liked this? And responded well, therefore I will then shift. Or did that just happen? Um, I would say in the beginning that it was a conscious thing. Okay. Because, um, I mean, at the time, like I said, I had just graduated and I was kind of stuck. Like, I, like, I, gotcha. I don't know what. Ah, so you were looking for affirmation. Like yeah. somebody, look, I'm doing stuff. I don't know what to do. Right. The first thing, if they respond positive, okay, right. I got a course now. I've I got did, like a rudder. Because, right, because I didn't. I had... You know, I have this degree, but then now what? So, like, yeah. what do I do now? So, I think in the beginning, yeah, it definitely started off <laughs> that way. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you know, though, that have got that same degree oh, gosh. and didn't do what you've done or, or do anything with that? Happens a lot, doesn't it? A lot. It? And that's... What I do you think that is? Because I see it a lot, too. I mean, I'm curious I about that, it's honestly. Just, um, it's like what you said or maybe you didn't say it it's like having this um i i did this thing and i have this degree and now either i don't know what i'm doing next or what i want to do isn't working out so i have to go and do something else i have to go and make money somewhere else yeah it's survival right yeah you gotta absolutely. eat you gotta get a shelter yeah, exactly. yeah it's and the I, basics i am privileged enough to wear at this point i don't have to do that because yeah. i I mean, which is also kind of why I got into this because I was working in retail. I worked in retail from the time I was 17. That was my first job. So it got to the point where I was miserable, like going, I was like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. So um, actually when I decided to go back to school, well, I had gone to McNeese, like, um, like I was 18, so 19, I think. And I was only there for two, maybe three semesters, I think. And my original um career path i guess or whatever my degree was photography so it was still in art but um so you know it dropped out and life happens and then when it got to the point where i was just sick of being in retail every single day i was like i can't i can't keep doing this so i have to figure i have to make something work and i didn't want to go back to mcneese i think and at the time i had uh my oldest son was four or five okay so you're living life at this point yeah Yeah, this isn't just like i'm out of school i'm going right right. so and i think at that point um i would have had like pretty close to four years at mcneese and i was like i felt like i didn't have time to do the four years yeah so you need to get started right exactly so that's kind of how i um fell into the thing at suella and again at the time i had no idea what graphic art was so i um i just kind of looked into that and I th- what i did know was that i wanted it to be some type of art had I, I don't think i really cared at that point i was just like i need to do something so that was kind of how when i saw that they had the um the graphic art program i was like two years i'll try that and see what happens yeah so that's kind of how that <laughs> came about interesting you said photography because i've met a lot of graphic designers who they went they they were going to be photographers right. and they were going to do something with photography and then it just shifts for them yeah i don't know that that would have worked out anyway um because i wasn't going to be a portraiture photographer i couldn't do that i was and even like in school when it came to like doing assignments of like taking pictures of people i was terrible at that i'm just like i can't even take pictures of people i'm just not good with people at all <laughs> So I was like, well, maybe this isn't, you know, not going to work out. So, and even, I don't know what the path would have been had I stuck with photography. I have no, no idea. Yeah. So. I mean, and look, it's, it's, again, it's one of those industries where 
you got to be pretty good at it in my opinion i mean because like for us i think we we take good pictures and i'll use that word good yeah and that's probably debatable (laughs) i mean really but in the scope of what we're doing it's not our main focus right and so for me to be able to offer that to a client i can go look i can bring somebody in who's a better photographer Mm -hmm. any day of the week it's not that maybe if we focused on just photography we couldn't tighten the screws you know but the unfortunately time is always of the essence Mm -hmm. and coordinating people with the photographer it just wasn't working out and so that's partly why we've 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 offered it but I, i'm glad that we have the photography yeah as a part as part of the lineup and we can use it creatively and marry it to graphic design right. and end up with something nice i don't know I, i've heard that a lot though i mean actually several i would say at least two or three of the designers who have come through here have yeah. all started out as either videographers or photographers and then they yeah. just like i'm gonna do design right you know so i don't know why it's led to that I but uh <laughs> a lot of people get into graphic design graphics design um because they like to draw and yeah. it's just like well i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but this is a way to yeah. kind of get around and then i know a lot of people who get in it and get out that do not like it there's several huh. good designers in our market who don't like the commercial side of it they okay. just cannot they're they're I guess there's they're not they can't stay in that happy medium of well I can do a little commercial right, and still be creative. Right. It's like I am creative right. and I cannot do this. I understand. <laughs> so they get out completely. Yeah. And go do something else. And I don't even know if any uh, some of them that I know I don't even know if they do any art. They just let that part go. Hmm. You know I don't know if I could do that. I have a uh, I don't know an innate thing that's just there that wants to do that kind of stuff well you've also been doing it for so long though so yeah that's true i guess <laughs> yeah it's been a, been a long time <laughs> it's weird though how creative industries are because uh there's a little snobbery that exists i imagine so yeah like probably even with the genre you're in i mean you're in that spot where there are artists that look at digital art and go that's not that's real not art. real art yes you know they don't see the digital tool as a tool at all right. it's just it's and i don't and i think that's just look i mean i love both mm-hmm. and i do both you know old school new school whatever and i marry them right too just like you do and um i don't like that i don't like hearing that kind Neither of stuff <laughs> because i can't sit down and paint you anything right no. like a master painter like somebody else right but that person can't look at Adobe Illustrator because Adobe Illustrator is a, a digital tool right, box. Exactly. It's not like the software is doing the thing. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, it's still creative. It's still art, in my opinion. I yeah. mean, a lot of people's opinion. Yeah, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that that does come up, though. I mean, oh, I, think I know it does. It, does it come up for you? Do you hear um, it? Like, I, in the cracks. I mean, be honest. Like, in the cracks. Do you hear that kind of sentiment? I don't know that... Um, I, well, of course, no one's ever said anything to me, and I think it's kind of like it's definitely improved. I can say that, but in the beginning, it was almost like a read between the lines thing. Like we, mm. like there have been um, a couple of um, organizations. Of course, I'm not going to name names. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know but, <laughs> what that would even mean because I'm so, so checked out of it. So. <laughs> there would be like, oh, well, we need a um, a poster for this, or you can enter whatever for this. But we don't want digital art. We and like there was one that oh, was okay. I got you. Um, a couple years ago in the actual press release said we don't want digital art. We don't want to know what the computer can do. Oh uh, wow! And that's, in the so press release, that's the, the second part of that is the part that would bother me. <laughs> exactly, and that's what bothered right? me. Yeah, so, not the first part. I could get like somebody going, "Look, we're looking for oil absolutely, paint. We absolutely. want to have a we want to have a painted piece. That's that what we was, want." That's the exact same thing I well, said. We don't like, want to know I what the computer can do. No problem with you not wanting digital art. Sure, but first of all, you don't know what you're talking about. Secondly, <laughs> right. why would you put that out for the public? For yeah, that's more to like see? a. We're letting you know we don't think this is art kind exactly, of thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I've so. seen things like that before the first half. I've never seen that second half. And that's the I. part that's like a jab, right? That's, and that was, it shocked me. <laughs> I was just like, I can't believe that they were just so bold to just come out and say that. Huh, that's and, interesting. And I don't think, 
I mean, like I said, it was an organization and then they're board members. And I'm like, did no one on that board look at that and think maybe that needed to be taken out? But Yeah, it's probably a sentiment that's just running through. the. But I will say, um, and I couldn't even tell you what the organization is now, but I do know that recently they put out a similar thing and um, that wasn't in there. And actually, I think someone in that organization had posted, like, specifically asking for digital art. And I commented, and I was like, oh, I'm glad to see that you guys have changed your stance on digital art. Yeah. <laughs> Which was bold of me, because that's not something that I would normally do. But, like, that really upset me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's like, you know, I think with digital art, I, I don't know. It's such a great base tool for so many collaborations between yeah. different mediums. You know. A few years back, we entered the art battle, which we haven't done mm-hmm. it since then. But we uh, we did an eagle head, yeah. And we what I did is it's the same thing I, you talked about. I sketched it out on paper, and then I went and kind of refined the drawing, and then I scanned it in, and mm-hmm. then I did all of the painting because we knew we had to want to have it pre-planned. I think right. most people, a lot yeah. of people, there pre-planned. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we want to execute this, but we need to have a we need to be able to take this and execute yeah. it pretty quickly, right? right? So what we did is I um, I painted it in layers in mm-hmm. Photoshop on top of my sketch, right? And I did it using all the colors right. th- that I knew we were going to paint. Yeah. And so then when we got there, I took and uh, I blew the, the, the original illustration up and I kind of made a... Um, a, a stencil-ish that mm-hmm. had like kind of the basic grid of yeah. this eagle head. Well, when we got there, we kind of lightly sprayed that on there. And then we had all our sheets ready to yeah. go. They had like, hey, we're going to do the yellow layer first and the bread yeah. and then the orange. It didn't look exactly like it, but it was a way for us to all work together. Yeah. And ultimately, yeah, that started out as a hand drawing. Right. It, it pencil drawing. It went through a digital phase, mm-hmm. which you could print that. Right. But then we took the digital phase and translated and it. it back. And so I go, you know, some people could say, well, that's digital art, right? Because we did yeah. all the, the planning and painting digitally. Uh-huh. But when you look at the finished piece, you don't look at it and go, "Yeah, oh, that's a digital, that's not art. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It's a mix. It's kind of a treacherous territory right there. <laughs> it you is. Know? I don't know. I mean... Uh, I don't know that that kind of thinking. I guess is 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 what I would hope that we can all get over because ultimately, and kind of like the show, it's to take something negative uh, right. and and try to get something positive out of it, right? So yeah. I think having a collaborative effort, heck, that might not even be a bad idea, is to begin to partner up with people like that and say, hey, I'm a digital artist Mm -hmm. and find somebody who's a traditional thing and do like a marriage show. That would be kind of cool, actually. Uh, Morgan and I have actually discussed that a couple of times doing like um, something because she does watercolor. And I mean, it'll happen eventually someday, just bringing it together and making it work. So, yeah, you know, you just got to get people out of their comfort zone and just I think you sometimes even if it's something you're not comfortable with, it's just doing things in the spirit of collaboration. Right. For the for the collaboration itself, yeah. because it gives birth to something new. And then I think we learn things. I mean, I'm that way. I, I know that if I just stay in what I I like and mm-hmm. just use the tools that I know. And if something new comes in the door and I say, look, I don't do that. Yeah. Then I can I can say things. Everything's fine. But yeah. I promise you. I'm either going to come to that realization eventually painfully (laughs) or I'm going to kill something inside of myself that could have, I think that's, again, that goes back to that creative force trying to find connections and make something new, like a a birthing of something new, you know? So I don't know. I think pairings are good. There's some several things in late Charles that I really liked. uh, and I can't think of the name but of it right now. It's been years ago. They may still do it. But um, it was where they would have someone write a song, and then someone would paint a painting to the song. Hmm. What's that called? I can't remember. Arts and Humanities did it. But it was really cool. Or it was a po- poetry paired with a painting. Huh. Like someone would write a poem, and then someone would paint a picture inspired by the poem. So you're taking you know these two forms and putting right. them together. 
Uh, Vision and Verse, I think is oh, what gosh. it was called. Okay. Were you a part of that? Do you remember that? No, I mean, I feel like I've heard that before, but I can't. Like, I, I that was probably long before. It's been probably got, five or six years ago. Yeah. I don't know, but I thought that was a pretty cool idea to take. I mean, I'm sure other communities are doing that, but just around here. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. How do you feel about the health of the arts and creativity in Southwest Louisiana overall? I... I want to say that I, I feel like it's growing, but at the same time, maybe it's always been that way and I just didn't notice because mm. I wasn't in it. Ah, gotcha. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's getting it's getting bigger. <laughs> it seems like it to me, too. Yeah. But, you know, I never thought about that point you just made, and that's interesting. Like, is it my perception that's changed yeah golly i mean it could be it could be (laughs) yeah i mean i I don't know but i mean the more people i talk to the more they say that yeah we have a strong community but then there's i I do hear the other side too that like yeah but there's a ceiling you also have to think about other people's um definition of art like we were talking about before they might not think what i do is art so i mean if there were 10 graphic artists you know out there you know if someone doesn't think that's art then like oh well no we don't really have you know right. painters and you know right. potters and all that so yeah yeah and i think you're right the definition of what's art yeah yeah i mean because some <laughs> people don't i mean I, I, truly there are people that probably look at pottery and don't think of it as right, art exactly. they think it's that's pottery it's in right. its own category and i guess it's a subcategory but mm-hmm. it's still a creative exactly yeah that, that's interesting i guess i didn't think about that either that there's people that think of art as just a drawing or a painting exactly right yeah or and music is music it's its right. own category. That's yeah. Yeah. That's true. The arts, you know, I don't know. I, I guess you don't know what everybody thinks. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd be curious to know. I think it's, I think it's, I don't know, again, outsider looking in, I'm not in the art community. That's odd too, because I love art, but we're just not, we're, we wouldn't be considered artists. Right. People don't look at us and think, oh, they're artists. Right. They just think it, graphic design, you know, and that mm-hmm. gets thrown off in this other realm. But, um, I don't know. It seems like there's more events. Yes. There's uh, more opportunities. I mean, I see, I'll, I can use you and Morgan as an example. I see y'all at more events. Mm-hmm. So I would assume that those are creative events. If there are artists there selling their work, those yeah. events are art related, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's more of that now than there was 10 years ago. Oh, for sure. I mean, even I wasn't in it 10 years ago, but I can tell you that it's definitely more um, events. Yeah. Have you had a gallery or a showing of any kind? Uh, definitely not a gallery because, again, who owns a gallery and thinks that oh, what, that, <laughs> what that I art. do is art? So, I got gotcha, you. Um, I got gotcha. No, I don't. No, I haven't. But you do like spring art walk and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Have you ever thought about that i mean like approaching um i've thought about it um but then at the same time i go back to you know what what needs to happen or um would work for like a gallery show and in my opinion and maybe i'm wrong i feel like it would have to be enough cohesive pieces to fill up an entire space which i don't have because like i said everything is pretty much different so that's that's not something that i've ever really um not that i didn't care to do but something that i didn't think about yeah Yeah. in time though i mean you're building up a a body of work yeah Yeah. who knows yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i think that could happen i mean i always wonder if i kind of wonder that about that here sometimes if there will ever be a show like that that's just uh logos and local yeah. you know like that kind of thing i think it'd be neat to go i mean to. with the exception of the um the thing that soella has the student art yeah, show it's I mean, not there, really... there's nothing else that i know of anyway yeah me yeah. either not not around here i know brimstone museum does some pretty cool oh, stuff that's right they, they did they, do one they had a show like that um, a couple years ago yeah yeah i'm trying to get tom on the show he's super busy right now he's got <laughs> uh so much going on over there. I mean, yeah. there's so many events this time of year. I think everybody in the area, there's tons of events. Yeah. yeah. What's your next event that you're going to be at? I am going to be in Lafayette on the 10th. Okay. So, um, and what's that called? Um, it's their second Saturday art walk. So oh. just like we have, um, 
you know, our spring art walk, they do that every second Saturday. Every second Saturday. Every, yes. With the exception of, um, I think like December and January. Oh. So they, um, so their entire downtown area and it's like, it's not just like pop up things like what I do, but then there's also gallery, um, spaces. So, I mean, it's basically spring art walk every second Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Do you, um, do you go every time or I do unless, um, you know, something else comes up here. If I have another I got event you. here. Conflicting. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, I like going there. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably pretty cool. Cause, yeah. uh, I don't know if you've been to Frenchman street in new Orleans. Oh, not yet. That, Man. that one's on, um, I have, a um there's a market there that's on oh you're gonna list. be there in the market or you just go eventually i that's i have a in my head i'm like i have all these things that i want to do as far as like events and branching out but then at the same time it's like okay that's a long way to drive yeah for, so I, I honestly would have to make like a weekend have you out been of it. to it i have and years my gosh, ago man years ago i that's one of my, my i've only been there once mm -hmm. but uh we found this is, I don't know, it was the perfect little setup one time we went to New Orleans and it was uh, the place we stayed was really close to it and we had heard about it and it was just within walking distance. We actually had parking, so it was nice. <laughs> Weather was perfect, and my wife and I went down there, and man, what a good time. I mean, yeah. just the creativity. I just, I think, I'm sure anybody from here who goes there, you can't help but go, how can we yeah. capture this yeah. and bring this back to Lake Charles? I mean, but, you know, they're doing that all the time. All the time, yeah. You know, and you're going, what does it take to have that? Yeah, I mean, it's you know? the same thing um, with the, the one in Lafayette. I mean, I've been doing that one for two years now, yeah. I think. So, I mean, it's at some point... I was like, okay, this we what do we do to get this to happen here? Yeah. Because not that I don't like going there, but I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if I didn't have to drive an hour to go and do right. that and then drive back at ten o'clock at night and get home at eleven? So you know, and so far I haven't figured out what that what I know, that formula I, is. <laughs> I kinda came back from that too with that thought, you know, scratching my head and my wife and I talked about that a lot. What would it take, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I have all kinds of thoughts about, and unfortunately, they're not solutions. They're just reasons why it's not happening. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I hate it when that happens. And I'm going, man, we should, we should, we should. But then it's like, well, you can't because and because and because. And I'm right. like, that's not the right way to think. But it does happen to me quite a bit. Yeah. You know, like downtown Lake Charles. Uh, here I am. I'm going to say some of the things why I think it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> but I mean, there's a spot down there. And I... I, I I just call it an energy flow. I don't know what else to say, but that's how I've said it every time. And, you know, you've got downtown, you're right there at Broad and Ryan, uh -huh. and there's a lot happening right there, and the energy's hot, man. It's like right. lit up and hot, and when something's going on, it feels good, and everybody's there. Yeah. And then you take a left, and then something happens. And it's yeah. not that there's nothing down there, but it's like the energy flow. Yeah. There's some weird feng shui. <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. Like, I really... Because I'll say this, I go, okay, these businesses change out. Why? Right. They got, they're doing cool stuff. I mean, you know, it could be anything. It could be behind the scenes stuff that you don't know yeah. about. But you just go, what is happening right here in this corridor? And the energy's good and flowing and things are just blooming. Yeah. And then you take these little, just not even that far, like and the energy the just block. goes, bam. It's like a circuit gets broken. And then you see businesses pop up, and then they go away. And then yeah. they rise, and they shine, and they fall away. And you go, something's there's something broken right there. And yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's a... I mean, honestly, man, I don't know. I might be just sounding too out there, but I think there's something else right there <laughs> going on, going... It's stopping that. Yeah. And I don't know what it's going to take. Man, somebody's got there some sage and... <laughs> <laughs> some drums or something or bless that right there but like there's it's like a certain water. yeah i don't know what it is i mean i could be totally wrong and i'm not trying to be negative i just have no. had that feeling no but what you're saying is the truth like I, I i can see that so i don't know well i'll say this this is just again observation trying to be honest on this show i don't like <laughs> i don't like tailoring things the whole point of this <laughs> i think the banks aren't interesting okay um, insurance isn't interesting. No. Right? 
law firms aren't interesting. And, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of churches aren't interesting, right? right. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad things. They're necessary and they're good. They're just not conducive to the flow of creative energy mm-hmm. and excitement and mm-hmm. things that belong in a certain area. So gotcha. I think when you get you get these little circuit breakers in a block, you have this bam and then cold, this hot cold. Yeah. And then like it's almost like you're wading out of a, a pool and eventually you forget you were sitting in it. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and that's kind of what I feel like is happening down there. There's just yeah. some stuff like that. Now that can change. Yeah. And there's two sometimes I guess uh, what you call like the too big of a gap. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I would experience that just going out to film art battle years ago yeah you know we would film the whole thing and when i would have a crew we'd all pick a spot but whenever i would do it by myself which sometimes i would sometimes i wouldn't but when i went by myself i would experience the cold spots Mm because i go okay i need to walk and go film this event yeah right and it's like okay cool but there's something else happening way over here so there'd be like a big a drag of gap yeah a gap and i'd feel it like by the time i got to the next thing i kind of lost my fervor yeah i'd have to find it again so i don't know just some thoughts about that it's not really again not solutions (laughs) it's just observations and i I hate that there's no solution but i don't know sometimes if you stare at something long enough you you know something will come out of there yeah i don't know all i think is just you got all of you that are involved in the artistic community uh whether they're traditional painters or digital artists, I think y'all are all doing good by sticking with it, you know, Um, because you don't have to do this. You're right. (laughs) Right. I mean, that's one of my questions I've asked everybody here. You know, you, what I think you're doing is good. And and all of you rise together, Mm -hmm. whether even if one doesn't think the other one is an actual artist or not, but you all do kind of rise together, I think creatively. And that's a good thing. But um, even when it gets hard, you kind of probably stick it out, yeah? Yeah. I mean, because, and like I said, this I have to do it. I mean, that I have to make it work somehow. Because so. <laughs> you don't want to do anything else. Yeah. I mean, and I've tried. It just doesn't, it's it not doesn't it. work. Yeah. So you got to stick with it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's really, is that really what keeps you in it? Or is it for the love of it? I mean, is there a healthy dose of both? Oh, for sure. I would definitely say um, the love of it. And then, of course, like you said, once when the when it gets hard, what keeps me in it is knowing that I I have to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, there have been a couple of times where it and I can't point to any particular thing where I was like, maybe I should just quit and go back to what's easy. Like, even though I hate it, like retail is easy. And so that I've had that thought a few times within the past, you know, a few years. And then all of a sudden, you know, something else will happen or something big will happen. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I can make this work. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely have those those moments of just wanting to call it quits. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just looking at you and listening to you and thinking about your art. And again, it goes back to something we talked about earlier. If I could make a prediction... I would say if you continue to do what you're doing, but I really do think that your work would be an awesome apparel line. <laughs> I really do. Like a a, a um, geography-focused apparel line. I really do. And I could see that happening for you, like where your designs get partnered with somebody who's producing some kind of clothing. Okay. I don't know. And it just becomes like, yeah, you're still an artist, but your right. apparel is sought after because of the designs that you're doing. They just seem to lend to that. And I don't know why I have that thought. I just think that, I mean, it seems like it would be fun and it's the kind of thing that people want. And so right. it creates like another revenue stream you right. know, out of what Passive you're already income. doing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. It's just something I just, as a an advertiser and marketer, I guess that's what I'm I'm seeing. What about people? I don't know. You're probably thinking, man, he's got a lot of questions. No, that's fine. <laughs> what about people in the community that you think are uh, lubricators for art and creativity that are like, maybe they're not artists themselves, or maybe they are, that you think are critical, like critical roles in this community? Do you have people like that that you go, oh, without them, there's a lot of things that, or groups maybe, organizations? I would say first, and it's maybe kind of obvious, but Jody. Oh, I mean, yeah, Jody. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, Jody Taylor, yeah, yeah. he's on the show. So I would say Jody, um, of course, like the Arts Council. Um, also, uh, Brian Petrie. Brian Petrie. Yeah, you should have him on the show. Okay, so tell yeah. me about him. I don't. So he is kind of like behind the scenes of a lot of things. Okay. Um, so when we uh, had the SWLA art group, he was like, and he he's a designer, so he does okay. that. I don't know if he. I don't know if he still does that, but um, but he was doing that for a while, and he kind of um, kind of brought people together. And he's not technically an artist, even though he, you know, he's a designer. Um, and you can tell that he kind of had that passion for that, like bringing people together and let's get out here and do stuff. Ah, and yeah, make okay. This um, a uh, showing together, yeah, right? Like, like a, a, it, mm-hmm. right. So I think um, those are the ones that you know that i think of off the top of my head you know years ago golly i mean probably i don't know man it would probably be the early 90s or somewhere between 92 and 95 for me i had a group of friends and um we were all into comic book art and Mm -hmm. some of them were writers and some illustrators some both and some just i mean just more like editors and things like that but they tried to start something like a studio, uh-huh. you know, to produce comic book stuff. And we all kind of got together and we meet at this place and we go do conventions and things. And at first it was just like what you described. We would go together and we had one logo and it was like a right. brand and we, right. we set up together and we were a unit. But then as a little time began to go on, and I don't know if this is just creative people, mm-hmm. I kind of had my own idea about the way I want my yeah. art was beginning to take shape and then the other person's too, but we were working on something together and it began to seem right. like, I hate to say we didn't agree, but honestly, now in retrospect, it isn't that we didn't agree. It was just that we were we were still forming. Yeah. Right. And once we begin to form, unfortunately, our creativity formed separately, separately and yeah. not into a unit. Right. It didn't belong together. Right. And I'm still I still know all those people all these years later. And that's 23 years ago or so. <laughs> and you know, in 23 years, I look at each of them and I go, yeah, seeing who we became we we don't even really talk yeah we just we weren't becoming people that belong together exactly right and i think that's probably just life in general that happens yeah so you know yeah well that's interesting i've I've enjoyed talking to you oh thanks (laughs) you uh it's time to do something new though am i the first one you're the first one why (laughs) i know but here's what's even better about that okay we can edit it out well no we're not no no, no, we can edit it out but you're not gonna want to edit it out so you're the first one, but see, you get to write questions to put in the fishbowl. Oh, okay. See, nobody else. These are the base questions that we oh. had when we originally came up with the idea. I'll tell you how this came about. Okay. So when we thought about doing the show, you know, you have to brainstorm, like, what's the show going to be about, mm-hmm. right? Well, because it, it can be about anything. It's right. really just about people and what they're doing in their, their communities to make it a better place. Right. I think art makes a community a better place. And so I and immediately I go, well, then you're doing something good for the community by just granted, you're doing it for your own life and for your family. Uh, but ultimately, by, by becoming an artist that's putting themselves out there and staying involved, I think you're making the area better. Okay. And you may not see it that way. Maybe. I mean, do you ever sit around and think about it that way? Not at all. That's not, never that never no, occurs to you. That's I don't I don't know. I don't. That's not something that I would ever look at what i do and think yeah this is well let me change that (laughs) i'm going to change that for you right now because i want you to imagine oh gosh that your seat that you're outside of yourself okay and then you go to um chuck fest okay right imagine if you're not there and morgan's not there and no other artists are there and then imagine if everybody who played music wasn't there (laughs) All the creative people just decide, I'm just doing this for me. I'm not going out to the public. I'm going to play music for me only. I'm going to keep it in my house. Okay. Play on my couch. Play for my kids. Imagine if you just did your art in your home. What does that event look like? To people who are coming, that's the life of the event. Okay. Of events is the kaleidoscope of creativity that's there. So it takes people who are going, yeah, you're doing it to sell your art, but Mm -hmm. you're putting your neck out there, too. And you're putting on the colorful, the beautiful, (laughs) you know, I mean, you're doing the whole thing for people. And it makes, I think it enriches lives, right? 
Gotcha. So anyway, that's kind of the long way around to saying that's kind of what the show is about, just enriching lives and people's quality of life and, and all the little things that people do that maybe we don't shine the light on. Okay. That they don't even themselves think. And obviously, you're very yeah. humble. You don't think <laughs> of yourself that way. Yeah. But for me, I have a lot of questions that I ask myself. Okay. <clears throat> and they're kind of questions that I use to, one, I guess, self-analyze mm-hmm. where the things inside of me come from, whatever they are, good or bad. Okay. And so to try and form the show, I sat down and wrote all these questions out. Well, as I did my first interview, I had my whole notebook out. You know, I was like, Gosh. oh, I'm going to, this is my format for my show. Yeah. And that's not the kind of person I am. I may be internalizing those questions. And some of them I ask you naturally, but I wanted to be really, where's the conversation go? Right. Okay. So I thought, man, I have all these wonderful questions. Some of them are pretty simple, but I didn't ask any of them. Okay. So we decided to change the whole format and make it a part of the show. So now we've taken each of the questions and we put them inside this lovely fish bowl here. And they're all folded up like a little fortune cookie fortunes. Okay. And you get to pick... We're calling this part fishing for goodies. Oh, gosh. Okay. So you get to fish your hand in there, and you're going to pick three questions, right? Okay. But the beauty of that is you get to submit three questions that are going to stay in the bowl for all future guests. Okay. And so as we go forward, every guest will grow the pool of uh, questions. Okay. So you can ask anything you want after this, but you're on the spot. After I go through that's right. Okay, so... So you just dive in and you just read the question and then we'll talk about it and see where it goes. Okay, so you said like a fortune cookie. I'm going to suggest in the future get actual fortune cookies so I that... I thought about that. So it's delicious. At least will be a snack That's involved right. in all this pressure. I don't even remember some of these questions, so, so I'm I, just as curious as you. So I need three questions? Three questions. Oh, gosh. I know. I'm actually I really... I was nervous before. My goodness. No, I'm really Don't be nervous. nervous. I mean, I don't oh. know. Some of them are kind of heavy. I'm nervous by nature. I mean, that's my proposal. Here, you hand them to me, and I'm going to re- re- read them oh, to Lordy. you. Oh, Lordy. I'm shaking uh, already. Oh, don't, don't be scared. I am. I'm actually... This is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, this is a good one. Perfect. Oh. It's perfect for you. Okay. <laughs> what music or artists inspire you? Now, I know earlier what? we kind of talked about the artist part, but what right. about music? Uh, I have... I know I listen to lots of music. I'm the same way. I mean, uh, that's that's a hard question to to answer. So I can just say like artists that I listen to. I mean, I have my Spotify playlist does not change. I've literally been listening to the same thing. So it's one playlist. You don't have like segments, or Um, do you have like? I do, but not very many. Like, um, you know, it's not like I listen to. I would say probably my favorite band from the past five or six or whatever years is the head and the heart okay so i listen to a lot of that yeah um and then damien rice i listen to a lot of that um and that's been since oh three so yeah. that's <laughs> so um let's see what else have i been listening to lately oh um the milk carton kids i've got man i don't know lot. any of these people <laughs> really yeah but i mean look i'm gonna tell you i'm all over the place too so so, that's why i it's one of the reasons i'm asking is because i like to find new stuff you know i have yeah i have so many i'm trying to think um like visualize my vinyl collection and i'm just like all over oh you listen to records yeah Yeah. okay i've I, I'm running out of space. I need oh, wow. storage options. What do you think about that? I, I, I love that, that records have kind of been coming back, but I was listening to, uh, we went and saw, I guess it was Sticks. Sticks or Kansas, but I can't remember which one. But they talked about that, how back when, before there was anything digital, before mm-hmm. even before compact discs, mm-hmm. you know, or tapes, it was all records. And yeah. they said, you know, back then you, you made an album to be listened to as one thing right. so it was like cohesive it wasn't like this song that song right. while they were individual it was like this one the album was yeah. meant to have a vibe yeah and so i kind of feel like that's coming back well i mean just from everything that we said earlier i mean i love it i feel like the 70s would really approve of my lifestyle so <laughs> I, I mean i'm i'm here for it 
Yeah. yeah. Well, good. So, and it kind of lends ha- album mentality, kind of lends to what you're saying about doing series. As yeah, things. yeah. You know, it's like I'm doing this series, okay, and then when I'm done with it, the next yeah. thing's going to be a series too, and it's out of my system. Right. So when I said earlier, the head and the heart, they have three albums out so far. Um, and I have all three, and every single one sounds like a totally different band. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't even know that it's the same one, but they're all so good. Huh. Yeah. Has the music ever, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you get in the flow. Have you ever been just listening to something go, dog, I mean, that song, like, just took me somewhere. Um, and my, my work changed, my flow changed. Not, I'm sure it probably has, but not that I've ever, like, you know, really been actual, conscious yeah. of. Yeah, because, okay. I mean, it's always, it's almost always playing, so. Yeah. Yeah. But you just haven't been like, oh, that was this yeah. zone that it At took me into. At least not as far as like my my work. Like there'll be sometimes when I hear a song, it'll kind of make me stop. But it doesn't really, not as far as like affecting my work. Okay, now. and there's no like one go to song, right? Like your 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 island song. Like if I got one song oh, and I'm living on the island, can I pick just one album? <laughs> That's tough. Well, I, yeah, I know, right? If somebody okay. asked me that. I'll tell you what it is for me. And I mean, it's not one album, but it's something that I've listened to, and I always go back. Year, I'm like, hey, it's the Police. Yeah. The box set I bought it when I was in high school. And somebody asked me that question. That doesn't take me two seconds. I'm like, oh, the police box set. I'll, their body of work. I'll listen yeah. to that. I could, if that's all I had to listen to, there's enough of it, enough variety. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, know. probably the head and the heart. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like I said, it sounds like three totally different bands. And then the second album, in my opinion, is the best one. But yeah, so. I'm gonna check them out. Please do. Yeah, They're I will. So I met, good. That's I will. Yeah, yeah, that's that's part of this is uh, for me too. I mean, you know, I yeah. wanna I wanna learn new stuff. Yeah. Oh, this is man. This is like the classic question right here. Okay. This was the first question I ever wrote for the show. Okay. <laughs> Did anything good happen in your life today? Today? Yeah, today. Sort of. Um, okay, it started off bad. But, that's good if it started off bad that's okay but then it improved see because this could have ended up totally different i was on my way like i got up early which doesn't happen because i like to sleep um and i was like i'm gonna go to the gym early so i can i knew i had to do this and i didn't want to you know have anything happen to where i'd be late so i got up early was going to the gym stopped at circle k was getting in my car and the ignition would not turn huh. like the key would not turn at all so i'm just sitting there stuck <laughs> Because my husband's at work and he can't answer his phone, so he's in yeah, so he has no idea you're so I'm like, broke down. All right, well, I'm just stuck here at Circle K, and it was like at least 20 minutes. And this is in Lake Charles, no, this was in Carlos. Oh, you live I, in Carlos, I live in Carlos. Oh, we do too. Yeah. I didn't know that, yeah. So, oh, okay. um, so I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I don't know, like, I'm googling everything, and Google's like, oh, it can be this ignition switch, and blah blah, and these be happening. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do about this now, Google? I'm stuck, yeah, you need, like, get on, and, yeah. <laughs> I need someone to help me. So, I mean, I sat there forever and trying to do everything that I could think of. And eventually, like, I got it started again somehow after. Anyway, and it hasn't happened again for the rest of the day. Like, every time I stopped, I was like, oh, God, my car is going to be stuck here. So where am I going to be stuck now? So I almost went back home after the Circle K incident and just in case it didn't start again. But I was like, no, I have to get to the gym. I have to get to this interview. (laughs) And so far, so if I'm stuck in the parking lot outside when I leave, maybe my car just hates me again. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I hope that gets figured out because, man, there's nothing like something to take you out of a good space than car troubles. You've mentioned working out a few times. (laughs) How important is that in your happiness um that is a relatively new um occurrence i would say within the past year or so. really yeah it's just it i guess to me it's kind of like the one or one of the few things where i don't have to do anything else i know what i'm ah. supposed to be doing i don't i don't have the house to focus on i don't have anybody else to focus on this is what i'm here for so this, I got gotcha. you. So that's kind of, I mean, it's kind of the same way. Like I like driving. So when when I say I go to Lafayette, I love doing that because I can't do anything else but drive yeah. for that hour. I can't focus on anything else. So that kind of like, yeah, yeah. I actually get that about dry and working out too. I don't get to because I'm honestly, unfortunately, it's just so much going on all the time. But uh, you know, driving, I'm that way. I don't like driving uh through con- in congested like even oh, no, interstate no, no, no. i don't like driving interstate but like if i'm driving north tend i tend to take all the like highways and byways okay, and yeah. stuff and i do like that a lot yeah like i don't mind a long drive like yeah, i drove either. to colorado 
last year, I think. I can't remember. Uh, but it, I drove where I was going straight there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 14 hours or so. And it was fine. I was like, man, I like this. I like watching the landscape change. Yeah. Something cool about that. Especially going through Colorado, man. Oh, man. It's From here crazy. to Colorado, the landscape changes. Yeah. Just like, so many times. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I mean, you go through... If, depending on which way you go, I mean, you could go through New Mexico and see mm-hmm. some cool stuff, or if you go in just Texas, yeah. is, uh, Texas itself is like its own country. Oh man. God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Texas, golly, I, I honestly, I think you could just spend a year traveling around in Texas, Texas. <laughs> and see so much. I mean, I've never done that, but uh, that yeah. would be pretty cool. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I just wonder about that. You know, I mean, you said it, so it seemed like it was important to you. Yeah, I mean, it is now. I mean, it's part of my routine now. So, yeah. I mean, there's no getting out of it. I mean, there are days, especially, like I said, with my routine, if I can't, if something interrupts that, it almost throws off everything else. So, yeah, I get you. I get yeah. that. You know, several years ago, I was doing that regularly working out and we had some things happen in our life and it just kind of threw everything. Mm-hmm. The schedule just shifted. Yeah. You know, a lot of it has to do with children and family. Right. It's usually what it is. Something changes, you know, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I'd love to get that back in the routine again. It's just finding that time. Yeah. And, you know, people say for anything good like that, well, you got to make time. Right. And, you know, sometimes you ever just hate to hear that advice. Oh, no, I absolutely. Because if, like I said, if I were working a regular job, there's no way I would not do it. I would sleep and then get up and go to work <laughs> yeah right oh man i hear you sometimes the life when you especially when you have kids and things sometimes your life becomes about making just launch pads for them to do things you yeah. know so i get that all right this mm. oh no i know no <laughs> you're gonna have to dig deep okay i mean really just uh yeah, dig deep <laughs> if all of your dreams come true what does that look like I mean, what I'm doing right now is a dream. Come is true. a dream, yeah. I yeah. mean, as long as it keeps going the way that it is. I mean, so that's, you know, I think that and. Do you anticipate it, like things though that you go? Well, I kind of anticipate these changes coming, or do you just oh kind of? Are you like in the moment only? I try to be because if I, I, I don't know. I don't think I can think that far ahead. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I would like to have um, more wholesale accounts. I only have one now. Okay. So I think that's, again, that kind of goes to the passive income thing. Like all of that is done. That work right. is done. I just have to get it and ship it out and let someone else deal with it. Right. So I think maybe, I mean, even if I did say I got like seven wholesale accounts or whatever, I, I would still do what I do now. I mean, I like doing events and having those small um moments of humor and human interaction yeah give me like four hours and i'm good give me a week to recover and i can go back out and do it yeah i got you so um i think i mean that's probably that's probably no that's that's enough i mean really i mean those don't sound like big shifts it sounds like like what you said it's staying on the track you're on and just watching those things enhance and refine right i mean that's a lot of what life's about anyway is like finding those places and then beginning to watch them sort of become the thing yeah i mean and i guess it also depends on i mean it's going to change with time like the the thing with the the wholesale accounts like that's a new occurrence that happened like last month so i mean if you would ask me two years ago that never would have wasn't on your radar no at least definitely not so um yeah i mean two years from now who knows so i'm on facebook everything is now i finally switched over to um business name related so i'm on facebook as pixel and ink creative pixel pixel and ink creative okay um on Instagram, it's shop dot pixel and ink. Okay. And then my store is just pixel and ink dot com. Okay. Is that your own website or is yeah, that? A, oh, it is. That's mine. Okay. So you don't sell, do you through, sell through Etsy or anything like that? Okay. No, so that's yeah, smart. Not. You're going straight. I've done a lot of work. I've been well. I it's only been like four years since I've been doing this, but I feel like I, I put in a lot of research and (laughs) a lot of behind the scenes work i guess so yeah i'm like i said i'm just trying to make this work yeah so you're not doing some people take a different approach right they go like hey i'm gonna put my work everywhere and sell on everything and like they do things where it's like buy this mug and it just prints my art on it i don't know what that's even called i know there's shops like that but uh i forget what it's. yeah i can't remember uh, either i've never done that but uh 
Um, I, I do have like one of those, but I haven't kept up with it. Um, and that actually started a couple, eh, maybe right when I started this. So maybe four years ago. And I just don't keep up with it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever's there is there. If someone wants to buy it, that's fine. And I get like $4 every month. <laughs> right on. What do, you, uh, what do you sell on your shop? Um, I have prints. I have my stickers, enamel pins. Um, I have vinyl decals. Um, and then when I'll have shirts soon, whenever we get in, magnets, buttons, um, I think that might be it now. Right on. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite piece? Like when Ooh. people buy it, you're like, oh, that's one of my favorites. Oh, gosh. They just love it all. <clears throat> no, I definitely don't love it all. <laughs> I mean, there's... Well, what's... Uh, I'll ask you this, because Morgan said something. She's like, man, there's a piece that I did that, like, everybody loves that stinking drawing, she said. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I, I was like, that. it's funny. And I laughed, because I was like, that that happens. Sometimes yeah. people love a thing that you went, oh, you like that, huh? Um, you have anything like that that you go, oh, people keep buying this one thing a lot. But it's not maybe your, the love of your life. I don't know if there is, it's probably something that I did a long time ago and maybe every once in a while I'll have a print hidden somewhere and somebody will grab it. I'm like, oh, I forgot that was even in there. So I can't, I don't think there's anything that I can think of right offhand. Yeah. And pretty yeah. soon those, uh, you said you got t-shirts coming for. Yeah. Um, they, the, the Chuck shirts. The so Chuck. They sh- yeah. They should be within the next couple weeks or so. Well, that's a cool design. So if everybody listening to the show should go just Aww. buy all of them. You Thank got a you. bunch coming because, I mean, people are asking for them, right? I have them coming. I yeah. don't know how many. I think uh, my whole issue is I don't want to be stuck with a ton all of right. shirts. Which I get is it. kind of why I only had 30 in the beginning. Yeah. Because I didn't expect it to turn out like it did. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So, uh, yeah, I mean... I'm well, assuming. and you know, people change their minds so quickly now, too. They could yeah. like that design, and it's hot and heavy, and then all of a sudden it's like, dude, right. y'all loved it. What happened, right? right? And it, that's exactly why I don't have 500 shirts coming mm-hmm. in, because I don't want to be stuck with 500 shirts. I get that totally. Yeah, we have that happen, too. I mean, brands yeah. shift so fast yeah. now. Used to, oh, we could gosh. live with a... Uh, we can launch a brand and, and have like something out there for maybe two years yeah. before you really start shifting. Now it's like six months. Gosh. I mean, you do all that work and it's over, man. It's time to shift yeah. gears again. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I, I'm glad you came on the show. I appreciate Thanks. you just being so comfortable and honest. And, 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 and honestly, I, I've enjoyed talking to you. Oh, well, thanks. And I love